Yeah, I, I hope I hope I hope uh, uh, all of you all of you appreciate um, the, the the breakthrough of artificial intelligence, and I know that you're enjoying it through ChatGPT and and uh, uh, exploring it and imagining the future through that. Mm -hmm. uh, but but um, at its core, it's about a computer that writes software that no humans can. Mm -hmm. And at its core, it's about the automation of what otherwise in the past would be seemingly intelligent tasks, writing stories, for example. Mm -hmm. And the ability to augment human endeavor, especially in areas like life sciences or climate sciences or material sciences, all the di different fields of sciences is quite spectacular. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we're all so excited about it. And that's the reason why scientists are excited, excited about it. That's why we're excited about it. Artificial intelligence is, is very different than traditional software. Traditional software, the energy and uh, that you use, the, the, the energy of the software that you develop and the energy of the software that you run is the same. In the case of artificial intelligence, the energy of the software to train is large, but the energy when you use it is much smaller than traditional software. So let me give you one, one example. Uh, we trained our artificial intelligence models to look at all of the signals and and the situations inside a data center with all the computers running and all the networks and everything the storage is running and all the activities running and optimize its power. And as a result, uh, that piece of software no human can write because it's too complicated, uh, but it can save 10, 15% of the energy consumed in a data center. Well, you write the software one time but you operate and save 15% energy all the time in every single data center. Uh, speech recognition, for example, you know, you, you talk to a smart microphone uh, on your phone and you say something, the amount of energy that it uses is actually extremely small. You train it one time, it takes a lot of energy, but whenever you use it, it uses a lot less energy. Does that make sense? This is the unique cap qualities of artificial intelligence because the software that it actually runs it, it takes a lot of energy to write the software, but the software that it wrote is very efficient to inference. It's called inference, the prediction time. And so this is very different than the way software used to be. Computer vision algorithms are more energy efficient. Speech recognition algorithms are more efficient. Language understanding models are more efficient. All, all of those models are more efficient. And so this is the, the consideration. How do we, instead of um, spending a lot of energy in five billion places all the time, you spend the energy in one place and you save energy in five billion places all the time. Does that make sense? Uh, the reason why there's so much excitement is because, uh, as you know, we were at the center of the artificial intelligence revolution. And over the last 12 years or so, 14 years or so, the vast majority of the work has been about advancing the science. And all of a sudden, Chat GPT help people realize that artificial intelligence is in fact quite useful. And you can use it for all kinds of applications. And you can find, it's called fine tuning, you can fine tune it for all kinds of applications we haven't even thought of. And because of this advancement in the last year, the number of startups in the, in the world focused in this area has exploded. It went from practically nothing a year and a half ago, two years ago, to now probably something like 750 startup companies around the world who are building on top of this new capability. So the advancement of the capability, the, pop, the popularity of it, the usefulness of it, and now the industry that's building around it, I think it's causing a lot of people to be quite excited. Some people call it the dawn of the AI era. Some people say the tipping point has arrived. It's almost like the iPhone moment of AI has arrived after all these years of talking about it. And so I think the, the interest uh, is genuine, the excitement is genuine, and um, uh, it all it, it's all because uh, finally it's reached a level of capability that is very useful to society. Um, and in fact, in fact, um, uh, the progress kind of goes like this. Uh, every generation of systems that we create 
improves energy efficiency and scalability by about a factor of 10. And so we reduce cost, we reduce energy, and improve performance by about a factor of 10 every couple of years. And uh, meanwhile, the scaling of the models can go up, the amount of data you train on the models can go up. And meanwhile, uh, new architectures that reduce the, the, um, uh, the size of the model is being invented. And so on the one hand, uh, we're making models larger and larger. On the other hand, we're making the, the computers more energy efficient and, and so on and so forth. And so, so I think that you're gonna see the next couple of years, um, uh, we go up a couple of years, uh, we come down in model size, maybe a year or two, and then we go up again. Uh, hard to say exactly how far, how far it's gonna go. But if you just look at the last, um, in the last, uh, seven, eight years, model size has in, increased about a factor of 3,000 yeah. overall. Okay, so let's say 3,000 every 10 years. Um, can it go up by another 3,000 the next 10 years? Of course, why not? And uh, computer, com computer costs will go down substantially, energy will go down substantially, and uh, we should be able to continue to scale for some time without increasing cost or increasing energy. Uh, the the thing that is that is very unique about the foundation model is this, and and, and this is a, a very important insight. It's called a foundation model, and it's called GPT because it's generative pre-trained transformers. The pre-trained part says, I can train it once, and all of you just have to fine tune it. And so, one investment is like you. You know, somebody writes Excel once, everybody else gets to use it. Yeah. And so we don't have to retrain Excel every single time. We don't have to recompile Excel every single time. We just have to use it. And so in the future, you're gonna have these la large language models that are quite flexible, very adaptable, um, has many general, general skills that you can fine tune with very small amounts of incremental training. And so I think this, this breakthrough is very significant. Well, we, we should also say that if we're looking at the researchers that are active in AI and machine learning within the WASP programs, some of them are attacking exactly that problem in terms of uh, can I simplify the generation of the model? Uh, can I use domain knowledge, uh, uh, understanding how, how do I combine uh, the models prior and the data, knowledge prior goes knowledge goes into the model? Uh, can I have a performance, uh, identical performance from a, a model that requires less training. Uh, so that's a very hot area of research at this point. Can you have models that are extremely sparse? Yeah. For example, you know, even though the network um, has the functionality of a trillion parameters, mm -hmm. but it's so sparse, it has the physical, it's the mathematics of only 100 billion transistors or 10 billion transistors, the sparsity because it's mostly zeros, you know, it's, it's um, don't have to be computed at all. Hmm. We have time for maybe one or two questions. Uh, any? Is it because it's, it's a FICA time? <laughs> <laughs>